my goodness, it's my own surprise party. I show up to the round table and I'm here with the beautiful Linda Ann Kahn. And I'm here with one of our super fans, Jackie Larson. They invited me to come do the round table at Linda's beautiful home. Remember, I've always said I wanted to curl up in her office and just take a nap because it always seems so cozy and warm. It is. But I showed up and they had party hats and flowers because it's my birthday. <laughs> and I just want you to know, round tablers, I adore you. And I can't even thank you enough for this lovely surprise. You're amazing. We are graced with the presence of Dr. Lindy McHutchinson. Let's do jazz Yay. hands for Dr. McHutchinson. We always swoon when Dr. Herbst is with us. Dr. Herbst is in the house. Susie Boshoff, lipedema.living. Kara Cruz, the pale ginger pear with her party hat on. My Patty Cornute, who had an awesome lipedema fitness triathlon, which we want to hear about. Let's hear it for Patty. And the lippy butterfly, Angelique Charles, shining like she always does. Well, this is, I'm already having a great time. If you want to put anything in chat to join the party, if you want to do any questions and answers, you can ask, of course, the doctors anything. And you know what? You can ask me anything tonight. I'm fair game. I'm an open book, everyone. <laughs> this could be scary. We have so much to talk about. Phew. Danielle McGarvey says happy birthday. Marsha Witt says happy birthday. Anne Webster and Jan Cunningham. And yes, everybody is automatically muted. You don't have to worry. If we want to, if you want to talk, we can allow you to talk. But how can you get a word in edgewise with all of us, right? <laughs> so thank you, Kara, for that alert. And thanks everybody for just putting your fun comments in the Q&A. We will follow along. It is so wonderful to be with all of you. Nita Cluis, my friend, and Marsha Black, and all of our awesome people. We've already got 40 people logged on and more will come, I am sure. But we wanna talk about a few different things. And for once, I want to first start with you, my friend, because you are doing a webinar for Lymphopressed on August 22nd. And it is, I hope I can say it all right, mast cell activation syndrome, mitochondrial dysfunction, the brain and the lymphatics. That is a whole lot of stuff. Please tell us what this is going to be all about. I'm so excited to be sitting next to you telling you. This is so cool. So well, my hat's falling off. I'll just take That's it. a sign of a good party the, when the hats um, fall off. Many of our patients, and I know that Dr. Herbst has been finding it the last two years, and so have I. Many of our patients have mast cell activation, and the mast cells are part of your immune system. And when they get activated, when, when there's an attack, the mast cells, they release histamines, and the histamines are there to get to, to get rid of this attacker. And so we usually do an antihistamine to help with that because we get a rash and we get red. But in mast cell activation, these mast cells are activated and they are overactivated all the time, like they're on steroids. So we wow. have to talk about that and how it affects lipedema and what we can do. And then I wanted to do the mitochondria at the same time because the mitochondria are the, is the, is responsible for the ATP cycle, the energy cycle, they're in your cells. And in many patients with lipedema and dercums, those mitochondria are not functioning really well. So you get really, really tired. Mm. I just did a biome test and my mitochondria were not the way they needed to be. And I'm going to live to be 100, so I've got to get my mitochondria working. Wow. Well, well, you know, so. and you know, you said in your description, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I get to touch her. I get to touch her right now. Uh, you know, brain fog. Anybody ever have an issue with brain fog? Yeah. Or fatigue, right? These are symptoms of this dysfunction. That's correct. And that's why we have to talk about the brain as well. And I've been doing a lot of research into the brain Alzheimer's as people are aging and what we can do to keep ourselves, our cognition going for a long time. So it's going to be really exciting and I can't wait to see you all. Well, we want you to be there and it's August 22nd. It's a Monday, 1230 
Eastern Standard Time. And if you just go to the link tree for Limpa Press, you can register for that and any other webinars that we have going on. But we're really honored to have Linda Ann Kahn doing that. Anything you want to add, Dr. Herbst or Dr. McCutcheonson, to this topic of brain fog and fatigue that so often affects lipedema women, but also those of us that are, you know, you know, it's my birthday and it's my last birthday in my 50s. I was going to say alcohol affects the brain. <laughs> I'm just joking. So we should have more, <laughs> are you saying? Or no, I'm no, I was just I'm going on with the birthday theme there. <laughs> well, because when I saw Dr. Herbst in her pearls tonight, I said, Dr. Herbst, I want to take you out for a martini. And you know, so it went from there. You missed the pre-show chat. Yeah, sorry but, about yes, that. Birthday but hats, I martinis glasses of wine, but that does add to brain fog. But on a more serious note, right. is there anything regarding note. mast cell or mitochondrial or? I, I agree with Linda Ann. I, I, I really think that brain fog has a direct correlation to inflammation in the body. And when you do drink alcohol, it inhibits lymphatic pumping. So you don't clear out what you're supposed to clear out. And if you look at you know, all the dietary recommendations recently, they're all like limit alcohol, limit alcohol, maybe a little tiny glass of red wine, but that's about it. Okay, talk about a buzzkill to start our round table tonight. <laughs> Sorry um, about that. Thanks so much, Dr. No, I'm only kidding. Actually, I, I am fine with abstaining, but question for Dr. Herbst, what do you think about long hikes lasting two to three hours for lipedema weight loss? Okay, I've never taken a hike for two to three hours, regardless, but what do you think about it? Lisa Lugo wants to know. I think I'm okay with it as long as you can do it. And, you know, if it becomes onerous and you overdo, then that's not good. If you overdo your body's ability to keep your toxins at a low level, like Linda Ann said, from mitochondrial dysfunction, then that's not a good thing. So I, you know, I think for any kind of exercise that you do, and I think Patty would be a better one to answer this, but you want to ramp up. You don't want to just like be a weekend warrior and just go out there because your body does generate toxins. And in fact, elite athletes, when they exercise can generate high levels of toxins. And it's a big area of study in sports medicine. Really good point. So Patty, what do you think? This is a great question for you, Lipedema Fitness. Yeah, I know in our group, we have a wide range of abilities and people who train and are just starting training and always you want to, uh, you want to see how your body responds. Sometimes you'll have a lot of swelling, but it will go down quickly. Other times it won't go down as quickly. And so you might want to adjust how long or how high <laughs> the hike is. Gotcha. And, you know, we always say every round table, listen to your body. You know, if your body's saying stop, stop. And then there are free radicals that are produced when you over-exercise, and that will also affect the mitochondria in the cell. Ooh, good point. I love it. Go ahead, Angelique. Question in regards to that, like, can we counteract that a little bit by increasing our dietary fiber and nutritional values so that we can counteract those free radical toxins that are flowing through our bodies? I think you can with um, the types of food you eat. So the an, an anti-inflammatory type of, of a diet, if that includes keto, but it also includes plant-based and others. And also you can take a variety of, of anti-inflammatory supplements like alpha, alpha lipoic acid has been uh, recommended to take before extreme exercise or even for like inflammatory neuropathy. Mm. So I think you can, I'm not sure high fiber would do it, but you know, I've never heard of that, but I think it's still good to eat high fiber. So, and you know, we have, you know, your party hack. are you sure you didn't have a few before the, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm kidding, kidding. We have with us lipedemadietitian.com, Jackie Larson. So when we're talking anti-inflammatory diet. Would you like to weigh in anything sure, about this topic? I would topic? love to weigh in. Go I just for it. wrote a post on my uh, Facebook page about inflammation and how to reduce inflammation. And one of the most important things 
that you can do is to eat more plants and plant-based foods. Because what you don't realize is there's a lot of phytochemicals or phytonutrients in each of these foods that help to fight the free radicals. They help with inflammation. And the more plants that you can get in the diet, your diet, the better. Whole grains, nuts, seeds, fruits, vegetables. And um, one of the things that I found interesting was that if you think about broccoli, you think there's, you know, some of the, the biochemicals that are in there. Um, and, and they, you think there's maybe a one or two, there are over 10,000 identified uh, biochem biochemicals just in broccoli. So eat broccoli, any fruit, any vegetables, berries are very high anti-inflammatory. They're good for your brain, uh, whole grains. Um, how and about dark chocolate? Dark chocolate, perfect, great antioxidant. Yes. And gummies. Sure. Well, Susie, I am not the food place. I always tell people I am not the food place. There is a place in everybody's diet for some gummies. And especially Susie's gummies because they are gluten free. They're whatever free. Yeah, don't they don't have any sugar in them at all. Yeah. Yeah. And they have soluble fiber in them. And I was just going to say one thing about soluble fiber. If you feel like Googling it, it's pretty interesting, but like your body releases bile when you're getting ready to eat. And the problem is, is I mean, when you're eating uh, with a meal and when bile gets released, part of what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to um, gather up toxins in your body and then it's supposed to help clean them out. And that includes like metabolic waste, like excess estrogen and things like that. But what ends up happening is if you don't have enough, if you don't have soluble fiber with that meal when the bile is loose, what can happen is it can actually get reabsorbed. And there's some pretty scary studies on the amount of toxins that get reabsorbed in the body. And since we already have kind of a funky circulation situation, I feel like it's even more important. And um, so soluble fiber is pretty awesome for that. There's a woman named um, Karen Hurd. She's kind of interesting, but she saved her daughter's life from stage four cancer from being over toxified. Like her, her oh. little girl was like 18 months old and almost died from uh, pesticide exposure where the carpet had been sprayed and the, the little girl had inhaled so much that she actually had cancer and was going to die. And oh. she was, the mom had a military background where she trained soldiers in how to handle um, neurological bioweaponry, weirdly. So the mom was like, my daughter looks like she's having a chemical neurological reaction. And she started researching on her own because the doctors were like, no, she just has seizures. We don't know what's wrong. And she has cancer now. And, you know, it was just terrible because it was fast. Anyway, she saved her daughter. Her daughter's grown now, has a bunch of kids. And, wow. like, yeah, and it was soluble fiber. It's the most outrageous story that I've ever heard. And she's got the science to back it up. But Karen Bird, it's very interesting. She suggests okay. beans. Beans. So, yeah, beans, five milligrams of uh, soluble fiber with a meal. And in her space, she specifically recommends beans. I don't tolerate beans well. So my gummy bears have um, 19 grams of soluble fiber in a whole bag. So and we have heard that the gummies do help you poop. They do. Yeah. yeah. We, fiber. Yes, folks, we're willing to go there tonight. So listen. <laughs> I, we have a lot of questions coming in about mast cell activation and a few other medical things, but we also talk about dealing with lipedema and regular life. And I have to say, Pale Ginger Pear, your posts during Lipedema Awareness Month in June were like poetry. I almost feel like you should compile a book from some of the posts. The writing was so good and it really captured the essence of a real life, I don't want to say struggle, but triumph actually. And there was something you said that was really powerful, focusing on what your body has allowed you to do rather than looking at where it may not be what you wish it was. Do you want to speak to that for a minute for us? I was struggling with what I was going to post for Lipedema Awareness Month this year because I was kind of getting burnt out on lipedema in general. Um, you know, Oh, going on almost three years of nonstop surgery and prepping and talking about it. Like 
I, I just want to like not think about it for a while. <laughs> so I was struggling on how I was going to post. And then the first post started and it just kind of clicked as this theme I was going to do for the month of showing lipedema throughout my life when I knew about it, when I didn't know about it, looking back parts, how clear it was. And I know for the longest time I focused on, well, I can't do this because of my lipedema. I can't do this because of my lipedema. And it just switched as to, well, I still had a kid. I still traveled as a photographer. I still had friends in different states I would go visit. You know, I took care of my dad. I took care of my mom. I did like, I, there was just things that like, I still was able to do and so I tried to like focus on, you know, that and what was able to be done. And then just, you know, we don't have to just sit at home with it. Like who cares what people are looking at? Just go do what you want to do because at the end they're not coming back home with you. That's empowering. I, I see you really smiling, Susie and Angelique, you're nodding as well. Anybody else want to weigh in on this? By the way, you rocked a bathing suit and your fashion was on fleek all month long as it always is. Go ahead, Angelique. I was just saying she was absolutely on fleek all month. Um, but that's absolutely true. Like me and Kara um, had quite a few conversations about, you know, like kind of just being over lipedema and just wanting to actually be able to live like our lives outside of lipedema. Um, I know for me, like it, it feels like lipedema had actually taken so much away from my life. Those two years in the nursing home and trying to rebuild my mobility and stuff like that. Uh, even here recently, I felt the same way. Like, oh my gosh, I am so over lipedema. Mm -hmm. um, but it's something that you kind of, you carry with you and you have to continue to live life the best that you can with the condition, you find ways to make the life better, whether it's putting on compression or having your vibration plate with you at odd places, having to carry um, vibration guns with you and special creams and this, that, and the other. I watched people that went to FDRS and some people carried entire trailers with them, but it's about figuring out what it is that you have to do to be able to live the life that you want to live. You can't let lipedema conquer you. You can't let lipedema be your everything. You have to be you outside of lipedema. Can we just like have an applause button that would go, wow, after a comment like that? That is so true. And I love it. I loved how Patty, you traveled with your lympha press to FDRS. And, it, you know, it just, it goes with you. Look, we don't, in fact, I was even talking to our team about coming up with an actual travel bag because our goal is that people get better. We want you to travel. We want you to live life. We want you to manage your lipedema on the go. And you can. All right. So mast cell activation syndrome. Deborah Ford wants to know what types of tests detect mast cell activation who would like to answer that one certainly not me <laughs> so the common ones are uh, histamine in the blood tryptase in the blood and then some histamine metabolites in the urine so n-methyl histamine but also some um, prostaglandin and leukotrienes those are the most common and unfortunately, it's not like, oh, you go and you get tested and you're done and you find out yay or nay. It, it's best to go when you're in a flare, but it has to be the right kind of flare. And sometimes you have to test multiple times to actually find something that comes back positive. So you, you just have to be really patient with it. And your provider who's doing the testing has to be patient too. Yeah, I just want to say something Please about the do. test because I work with a lot of patients who have Lyme disease and many of the Durkham's patients have Lyme patients with Durkham's and the Lyme patient tests are also not accurate. There's certain laboratories that are better than others. And so with the mast cell, 
it, it's so hard to be in the flare and be there within an hour. Is that right, Dr. Hopes? You've got to be in the, supposed to be in the laboratory within an hour, and then they've got to send it at the, the right temperature to be analyzed. So it's very difficult to, it, it, to me, it seems to be a really a clinical diagnosis a lot. Yeah, and some um, sometimes they forget to run some of them and you have to do a 24 hour urine collection. So you have to make sure you do it right. So yeah, it's, it's difficult, but according to Dr. Afrin, he said, you know, it's, it's worth doing the testing because if you start trying different supplements and medications to help you and you start reacting to them and then you try a different one and then a different one and you get frustrated and you say, why am I doing this? You go back to those labs and you say, because you have mast cell activation syndrome. So we got to keep going. You could, you know, there are other, other providers who say it's, it's okay to just do a clinical diagnosis and move forward, especially for people who are really struggling and they just want some treatment right now. So I can see both sides. Yeah. Yes. Jump and on in the last two weeks, I've had two patients who developed mast cell activation syndrome, and one is actually a physician after getting COVID. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Very well, interesting. This is really a topic that was highlighted at the FDRS conference. We're so glad that we're continuing to dig into it and we will continue to bring good information on this topic. I wanna to say to those of you in the Q&A that are frustrated that we don't have chat tonight, I am so sorry. I'm not logged in from my normal computer and for whatever reason, Zoom disabled chat, but please do, we wanna hear from you in the Q&A and we will try to get to everyone. Sandy Susanna says, I love Lizzo. Why man great till they gotta be great. You, Angelique, you did not think I knew a Lizzo song, did you? Girl, I, I may be 59, I don't. <laughs> but I'm still fine. And Lizzo rocks her size. She says, maybe I should label myself with Lizzo Dima. Okay, that's a really good comment, Sandy. We appreciate that. Uh, Deborah Burrell says, Dr. Herbst, how common is lipedema that begins in the upper arms? Now her legs are showing the signs and the abdomen also. She has lymphedema in her left forearm due to lymph node dissection 26 years ago. Her lymphedema therapist diagnosed her arms and had her palpate my abdomen and legs this morning. She agreed. So there's a lot in there, but is it common for lipedema to begin in the upper arms? Wow, that's a great question. I mean, I, I know that 80% of women with lipedema do have lipedema in their arms, but in terms of it beginning in the arms, I would say that's not as common. And I don't think I've ever seen a prevalence rate for that. And I have one patient who only has lipedema in her arms and she's 74 years old and she it's lipedema arms, but, they were, but the rest of her body's okay. But I've never seen that before. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And we know that there is treatment available. Of course, PGP, you rock your upper extremity garment. And we love when you show that on Instagram. And how is that affecting your upper body? Uh, I, I do want to say, looking back at pictures of me as a kid, my arms were more noticeably larger from like the elbow up then my legs looked disproportionate. Like you could see that the legs weren't smooth and they were like column like, but my saddlebags didn't really start until a little bit later, but the arms were noticeable at like nine, 10. Like I vividly remember at like nine picking longer sleeve shirts to like hide it cause I didn't like it. So I know from like early on my arms were more noticeable as in they didn't look right versus like the legs, but it was all over. It's just the arms showed up first visually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the upper arm garment is great. I put it on and I watch TV or I chat with people and just have it help reduce the swelling from post-op or just from the day to day. Cause I don't wear my arm compression probably as much as I should. I get too hot in it. Like 
And I would rather make sure my legs and abdomen are covered because that's where I swell more than the arms. The arms right now is mostly just like loose skin. So, but the, I use my lymphopress both body and arms daily. Yeah. When, and you know what? It's effective. Go ahead, Dr. McCutcheonson. We're so honored that you're here tonight. Hi, you guys are awesome. Um, so thank you for all this, the lymphopress arm stuff. One of the things I would ask the patient who are getting their pump process, because you have to document compression for four weeks before they can put the paperwork in, right? And one of the shortcomings that we see is that we actually forget, and, and now I've, I've had to change my paperwork. We forget to document compression for the arms. It's very, very common, and everyone documents, recommend compression for the lower extremity, for the hips, for the pelvis, for the abdomen, but we forget to document compression for the arms. So for those out there who are, um, entering this early phase or who are in the phase of getting their lymphopress pump, just remind your provider to say, oh, did you document compression for the arms? Because that's something that's commonly like overlooked. I am so glad you mentioned it. And I also want to say, I interviewed an amazing woman this past week. By the way, I have recently interviewed two women on the Lipedema channel. You can see it on YouTube that are your patients, Dr. McCutcheonson. <laughs> And they speak about how you gave them hope. And when nobody else validated them, you gave them a diagnosis and a path forward. So I applaud you for the amazing work that you are doing at your center in North Carolina. And you're, you are tremendous. You're changing people's lives. This woman, Jessica Wilson, I don't know if she's with us tonight because it's hard to see because I'm not on my regular computer, but she's known as the girl with the skinny feet. And she had used the lymphopress in therapy with her lymphedema therapist. And it worked tremendously. She lost, she reduced, she felt better. The ache was gone right away. So she goes to her general practitioner and she says, I, I need a pump. And he prescribed a pump, but you just can't say pump because not all pumps are alike. And she didn't get a lymphopress. And for two years, she has been struggling to try and get the same kind of results she got at her therapist clinic. So now she finally went to bat again. And she said, by name, I want a lymphopress. And she uh, emailed me. And now she is the girl with the skinny feet. And she's talking about how much she loves using her Optimal Plus. But, you know, we have to be our own advocates in healthcare. And especially the lipedema population. I want to ask of our medical professionals: Are you seeing more women coming in empowered, educated, and ready to? Well, you're, you're nodding. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I just also in the last few weeks, I think I had four new people coming in who sort of self-diagnosed and came in to see what's going on. So yes, and they want, I always have people fill out a form. Are you prepared? This is the program. Are you prepared to do it? And they all said, yes, whatever it takes. So that's really good. Good, good. We love seeing people feel empowered. We know that the standard of care has also empowered women to walk in and say, this is what I need. This is what's going to help me. And so we applaud, well, we've got authors, authors, authors all over the place that were contributing, but certainly you as the lead, Dr. Herbst. What do you think is the next mountain to cross when it comes to lipedema awareness research and what our focus should be on? Uh, wow, I, I think... I mean, obviously we, we need more, you know, awareness throughout, you know, all different kinds of healthcare provider groups. But I really think we still have a ways to go in identifying what is lipedema tissue and what is not. Mm -hmm. And we still are pretty far from that. However, in the uh, standard of care for lipedema in the U.S., we went out on the skinny branches, as Dr. McCutcheson says, and we said that there was lipedema tissue on the abdomen, 
And we could have been proven wrong. I mean, we all felt pretty confident, but there are other naysayers who say that it's absolutely ridiculous that there is lipidema tissue on the abdomen. So there's new data out showing that, you know, it's likely that yes, there is lipidema tissue on the abdomen and it's very much so like the thigh. So we just need more, more things like that. We need a biomarker. We need to be, you know, be able to identify women who are with lip, who have pure lipidema versus women who have lipidema plus additional adipose tissue that we need to work on. You know, we just need a little bit more direction from the body. Yeah. So I yeah. think that for me, that, that would be just be so helpful to say, oh, look, your, your lipidema marker here is at four, but it, you know, this other marker here is at six. And so you've got both. So let's, let's go at them both. Or, you know, you're right. You just have lipidema. Let's go down this pathway. And there's just, there's so many, you know, like the stages of lipidema, we need to modify those. The types of lipidema, we need to modify those. So there's just a lot of but still basic work, I think, that needs to be done. And we are committed to supporting it and making it happen. We thank you for your dedication to lead the, the cause. Pale Ginger Pear, what would you like to add? Uh, I can say there's definitely lipedema in the abdomen. When I did my tummy tuck with Dr. Jamie, he said that there was no normal fat left on my stomach. It was all nodules. I've seen the pictures. I have the pictures I could share. People want to see them, but it was a lot of just nodules. Now, I know I probably had other fat initially, but as we worked on the surgeries before, my top half reduced in size before we even touched it. So mm -hmm. I think as we worked on the other areas and I was moving more and my body wasn't as like filled with toxins, it was able to start to lose some fat normally. Mm -hmm. So my stomach might have gone down in that sense, but my stomach was all nodules. Like I could feel them, I could see them. It was very visible. Mm. I, as a patient who's now done, like lived the larger stages and now done some surgeries, there needs to be a lot more talk on the mental health side of lipedema. A lot. Yes. Okay. Yes. And that is a huge point that we are focusing on at Lympho Press. Go ahead, Dr. Herbst. I just want to say I've been doing a lot of research into um, mental health and vascular disorders. So vein disease, lymphedema and lipedema and stress generates a ton of inflammation in the body. And, you know, we, we talked about, um, I think it was um, the presentation I did for Lymphopress, um, what was it called? Brain, body, whatever. Oh, anyway. mind, body, and the, the matrix. matrix. Thank you. So um, we talked about interpersonal sensitivity, right? So um, it's um, angst at all compared women with lipedema to people, so men and women with lymphedema, and they found that women with lipedema had higher interpersonal sensitivity. And that means that you're you're more of an empath. You are very affected by what other people say, and you're you're a very you're a highly sensitive person. And when they looked at people who were had high interpersonal sensitivity, their telomeres were shorter. So telomeres are a sign of cellular aging, and that usually happens when there's a lot of inflammation in the body. So I I totally agree with you, Pel Ginger Pear, that we really need to focus on decreasing stress and you know spreading the love to women with lipedema because if if women with lipedema are constantly like battling to get their insurance and battling to get their compression garments and trying to get a therapist to understand that she doesn't need just her calves treated she needs her whole body treated and and just you know being heard that she's not just a woman who has fat and and I don't know how to do it exactly but we got to do it yeah. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, PGP. Yeah. I mean, there's our whole lives. Nobody believes us. So that gets you mentally to begin with. Then you have to fight for everything. And then you finally get help and relief and start the surgeries. And you get hit with this almost like a postpartum depression after surgery. And nobody talks about it. So then you feel 
crazy for then complaining that you feel sad and depressed and miserable after you finally got the thing you were fighting for. So then that adds another layer of like, what am I allowed to talk about? Am I allowed to admit that I don't feel good mentally, even though I just got what others wish they could get done? It's just a whole thing that like not enough people talk about. Yeah, I think that, yeah, I see a lot of nodding. Who wants to else jump on in here? Because this is a hot topic. In fact, this is why the round table was born because we said, okay, we can offer a device that can help, but there's something that a community and really connection and engagement and support and encouragement and being seen and being heard can do to uplift this community and having all of you amazing people here to do that every month. It's a safe space where people can show up, log on and say, okay, I'll be understood here and I won't be judged. That's what it's all about. Susie, did you want to add something? I mean, I went through after I after I had my surgeries, it was really brutal because A, there was the pain and the recovery of it. And B, I, I did not expect to look great when I was done. I didn't go in with that, but I would be lying if I said that there wasn't some hope and expectation that my legs would look more normal. And my after pictures were really, made me really sad. And then I didn't want to share them with anybody. Um, and I didn't want to talk about it. And I felt like I was a failure or there was something wrong with me. But I also think that just hormonally, the body's shifting for the first time. So I do think that there is part of that. And then I want to say something, and I, I, I know this is a safe space, but there are some bitches in this community and it needs to stop. It's not cool. Like lipedema looks different on different people. And I have seen some pretty uncool comments or things and I get it. Like I, some days I'm in pain and it's like a seven and I feel triggery and I don't feel kind. And somebody said something and my knee jerk reaction is to be a little mean. I get it. But I think that when we're handling each other and when we're taking care of each other, especially in some of these Facebook groups and on social media. If you wanna say something mean or you wanna say something that's triggery, like stop for a minute and take a look at what the impact of that communication is gonna be. Because we are putting ourselves out there and being very vulnerable, especially pale ginger pear. And I have seen some pretty uncool stuff in that arena and it's not cool. It's, it, it, if we don't have this as a safe space, what do we have? I mean, that's what I love about the round tables. Always amazing, always. We, if this is a no zone, this is a no, nothing but love zone. That's I right. demand that. But we need to carry that over into the regular, like after you leave here, you know, remember to love on each other outside of here. And, you know, that kind of thing. Anyway, that's all I want to say. I, so, well, you know I, what? I, I, I really think that your candor and your passion was really important there. And we can control what happens here in the round table, uh, but there are so many other portals and, you know, hurt people hurt people. And I get that, you know, you said, you know, there are a lot of bees out there and, you know, they're everywhere on every every forum in every condition it's not just related to lipedema and i think that choosing kindness and choosing love will always win and i've seen each of you take the high road when you've been battled and and hurt and i just want to personally say I, i'm so honored to work with all of you because you stand up and still doing the right thing because you care about helping other people. Patty, how, how would you like to add to this conversation? Because I love that you are a fierce protector of the people that are on your social portal, the Lipedema Fitness Facebook page and your groups. How do you manage this keeping it kind? <laughs> uh, I don't let a lot of discussion that is on other groups, in our group, it's uh, it's a safe space. And the minute it starts to get too much drama, I, I just delete the post. 
I, I, I'm not trying to do it to be offensive to anybody, but I just don't have time for it. It's, it's everywhere and it needs to be a place people are uplifting of each other. Yeah. If what you got today is 10 minutes vibration plate, hell yeah, that's awesome. You know, then you did something, right? And some days you want to go lift a heavy bag or whatever you can do, then you do it on those days. And we try to cheer people on for whatever they have, all or something. That That is our motto and really, really important. Now, I'd like to touch back on what she was saying about the emotional side. I haven't had the surgeries, but I just got done COVID. I had COVID for two weeks and that meant uh, it, it, I had the triathlon. So the week before the triathlon, we are very minimal in what we do physically. Then we do the triathlon. And then literally like that following week, I came down with COVID and I've never had it before, thankfully, but it really takes the wind out of your sails. And I did kitchen sink push-ups only occasionally when I had the strength and the energy to do it. And other than that, I really wasn't able to do anything. And that really weighs on me because I use the physical activity and the strength that I do to help me emotionally because it makes me feel stronger when I do it. Mm. And to not be able to do that, it really compounds the thoughts that you have and the, the depression stuff that kind of comes in and the feeling like you can't do anything. And then your body is literally getting weaker as you're dealing with all of this. And it was this big snowball. And I mean, I think I got one bike ride in, in the middle of that. And I got like a couple of days of kitchen sink pushups. And last Saturday was the first time I was able to get back out to the park and literally squatting felt so good. If, you know, I had to ease back into it, but just because I was taking the action and doing something to show my strength really uplifts me emotionally. So if you can do something activity-based, you know, that can really help a lot. That's really a great point. And, you know, you did just have this amazing win and then you got knocked down. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Isn't that often the way it is in life? You have a breakthrough and then something comes along to trip you up. And yet, what I admire most about this community is the resilience. You know, you get knocked down. I get knocked down, but I get up again. You know, never going to keep me down. I get knocked down. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Herbst, for dancing with me. Everybody else, you're acting like wallflowers here tonight. And it's my it. birthday. And well, I'm not going to cry. Should we get the wine? I <laughs> think we should sing happy birthday. Yes. Well. Mm, unmute, everybody. Unmute. If you're on the panel, unmute. Here we go. Oh, oh man. Where do we go from this here? Is for you, Brenda. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Brenda. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Oh my God! Beautiful. Okay. Uh, well, Angelique, first of all, what a Angelique, voice. girl, yeah. Angelique. I, I feel like I had Aretha Franklin singing my birthday song there, but that's so nice. And you know what? You are all the stars of the show. I just get the privilege of moderating, but I have to say, you are the gift to me. This community, this panel the privilege of working with all of you, the ability to do work that makes me feel like I'm doing something meaningful to see people's lives get better. And, you know, we all know, if you're new to the round table, you may not know, but last year was probably the most difficult year of my life. And it's because of this community and these wonderful people that I can actually smile again. And feel hopeful about my future because together we can get through anything. So if you are feeling embattled, we get it. I don't have lipedema, but I've had my battles. We have all had our battles. 
And if you will just keep going and link arms with people that care, you will see that the light is at the end of the tunnel. My friend got me. So remember last month I said about being in the chrysalis and the butterfly is pushing against the chrysalis to try and break free. And it's not pretty. It's kind of violent. The butterfly is like going like this to try and finally get out. But it's that struggle that creates the strength. So my best friend, Anita, got me a birthday card, which you would all love. And it is a butterfly driving. And the police officer pulls the butterfly over and the butterfly hands over her license. And it's got a picture of a worm on it. <laughs> and it's like, well, okay, I don't look like that anymore. <laughs> So when we get out of the chrysalis, we're not going to look like we used to, and we're not going to be who we used to, but we will get there. I love you all. So we still have time. Yay. So we want to talk about questions. You know, when we asked about what do we need to do next, I love what Holly Hope put in chat. She said, we need to educate pediatricians. That's awesome. And you actually have a lipedema patient group that you've started. Why don't you tell us I about that? I didn't start it, but I'm part of a lipedema patient group. And our goal and our vision is to reach every single physician in this country. And we looked at the type of physicians that lipedema patients would go to. So we a vascular surgeon, an orthopedic surgeon, and yes, pediatrician, internist. And so we've got a whole group of people um, Jackie's actually on our team. She's the registered dietitian on the team. And I have a new patient who is a pediatrician and an internist, and she's going to be joining our group. Oh, good. And so the vision is that we'll reach all of these uh, physicians and have articles published in all of the journals. And then we're going to need help from the lipedema influencers. Um, we have Susan on our, on our group. She's a blogger and we're going to need help from all of you to get the word out. So just stay tuned. Good. We want to support what you're doing there, which is amazing. Okay. Things that you learned since last month or words of encouragement that you want to share. And by the way, congratulations on such an amazing lipedema fitness triathlon. And, well, you know, really you had people from all over the world participating, Patty. International. <laughs> Watch out. We'll say we knew her when. But, and you also had a fascia discussion with Dr. Herbst and Gil Headley. Why don't you fill us in on that? Oh my God. So exciting. I had um, been talking about Gil for about six months and I had stumbled upon him when I was trying to just kind of get back into basic anatomy of what's going on in my body so that it's not just lipedema. Maybe there's something else going on you know, pinched nerve or whatever. And I started looking at fascia and Gil has an amazing video called the fascia fuzz. And it talks about how every night you go to sleep, this little bit of stuff starts to get growing. And when you wake up, you've got to do things to kind of move and break that back down again, because if it sits there, it gets thicker and thicker and harder to move. And so twisting becomes very important. And there's all different types of, um, movements that you can do. A lot of them are yoga and Pilates and things like that are all kind of seem very similar, but I started following him and I, every Monday he's got a video that comes out and he, he explains things very, very well. And I just happened to email him one day and said, do you know anything about lipedema? Because I just thought, wouldn't it be great to pull in somebody who specializes in that into our community? And he was like, you know, I've heard something. I think one of my donor um, cadavers had lipedema. And so he was very interested. He opened and I kind of came back at him with some questions. And I said, would you ever want to be on the live with us? And he was like, I'd love to. And then I'm like, oh, I've got to reach out to Dr. Herbst because I think she would play really well with this. And I really want them to meet. And so, yeah, she was available. Thank you so much. And it was amazing. I mean, Crystal and I kind of sat there like, just like you could just see the ideas bouncing back and forth. And then in talking with him, he didn't just come on and talk to Dr. Herbst. He has been talking to like everybody in his field. And I, I ended up researching some of the other people that he was referencing. 
and they are some big wigs in this field and they it's just so much fun I can't wait to do more with it and I hope that you all still continue to connect and if I can make that happen again I would love to so it was amazing I we applaud you for pulling that together it was really awesome if if we could say it's <laughs> awesome tv it was must see tv kind of thing and dr herbst you're always uh so open and welcoming with your times so appreciated these discussions that push the envelope and cause us all to think more it's really invigorating and by the way libby butterfly i did notice that you had posted a lot about maintaining balance how are you doing with that I am still struggling, but um, this past week I told Michael, my boyfriend, that I just needed to get away from it all. Like with the new edition of the director of music position at the church and with everything that was new that was going on with my mom, still dealing with lipedema and stuff like that. I just needed a moment to get away. And I always suggest that for anybody who can. We just took a small little trip up north, like an hour and a half away from here, but slightly cooler temperatures, nice views, nothing but just some peace. I think that every now and then you just need to take a break from life, not taking your phone, not being on social media, not worrying about the family, but literally just getting one-on-one -on -one. and sometimes with nature I feel like there's something really positive about fresh air the sound of running water and birds and trees and all of that I think that just kind of brings you back to life helps you to reset and helps you to get regrounded yeah. again okay, yeah, so we like that. take a little break from life right yeah and we like your smile you are you're shining Thank you. I'll have what you're having. <laughs> it's a Michael. <laughs> okay. Does anybody else have any true confessions? You want to go around the table here? Oh, I'm just saying this is, you know, an open forum. Go have, ahead, Dr. Herbst. So I was trying to find some music that resonated with me and not just like radio music, but like concentration you know, like um, relax, anti-stress kind of music. And I've, I've listened to some and they're okay. You know, they kind of go on and on and, you know, they have little bells and things. And so I'm, I'm like, well, let me look a little more. So I looked a little more and I found one and it's um, music for ADHD. And it, for me, it is the best music to just put me in this, like I can feel my brain go, Oh, wow. And I, and I, it's so powerful. I wanted to call and email people and say, Oh, I found this music and it's so great. But, but then I realized, you know what? It's great for me mm. and other music might be great for other people. But I think, um, you know, I, I said, I don't really have an answer to how, how you de-stress. I think it's very personal, you know, for some, it may be exercise for others. It might be taking a nap for other people. It might be music, but, um, you know, you've heard of the binaural beats. Mm. Well, binaural beats help balance your brain. And I do believe that this particular program has binaural beats. And so I would encourage you to do a little search and look for some music that when you hear it, all of a sudden you say, ah, because I didn't think it would ever happen. Yeah. And I'm a little older than you, Miss Thiela. And, but obviously that's not true. It, it happened to me. So it can happen to you. I love that. That's great advice. And we still have a few more questions, but I want to share something personal because we always talk about listening to your body. And after my partner died, living in Sarasota just made me sad. And no matter what I did, I tried to get over the grief and I tried to be happy and I tried to be appreciative and grateful and make it work. But you know what? Sometimes things change and you have to change with them. And I realized that I was sad in Sarasota. And so what I did, like you found your music for ADHD. I said, you know what? My heart is telling me to go to San Diego. And so I moved, I, I 
loaded up the truck again and moved to Bever, well, not Beverly, to San Diego. And just for a month to see if it was a real thing or if it was just an anomaly. And as soon as I got here, I felt the cloud lift. And so I'm not saying, look, whether it's music, whether it's nature, whether it's changing your environment, stop trying to make a round peg fit in a square hole. Because there are different things in life. And just because you've always done it a certain way doesn't mean it's still going to be the way it's going to work the rest of your life. And being willing, give yourself permission to shake things up. That's my little bit of advice because I finally gave myself permission to admit to being sad and wanting to be happy again and doing whatever it takes to get there. And for all of us, it's different, but I think that your advice is excellent, Angelique. Anybody else want to weigh in on this topic? Because I think it speaks to our mental health as well. Yeah. I mean, for, for me, it was uh, May and June. I got back into traveling and photographing the comedian that I've been working with for years and just pretending I was back in my 20s before the kid, before, <laughs> before everything and just road trips and crappy hotels and hanging out with people that make me laugh and like they knew me before I knew about lipedema so like that doesn't even come up in topic with them um the only thing they ever said was you look happier and healthier yeah and that they were happy that I was getting to have like a second chance but there was no other topic there was no other like well what compression are you wearing like I got to just forget about like the lipedema side and go back to like Kara I actually got called Kara. Like that's that's rare. <laughs> Cause that's I'm either cool. mom or pale ginger pear. Like <laughs> so it was it was nice to be back with like my people. Yeah. I felt like my inner being and my human being finally were reunited again. And I feel like that's what I'm hearing in what you're saying, Kara, as well. And that's that's so important. Only you know when you're out of alignment. I realized that there were so many questions that were answered and we had some technical challenges tonight, but I hope that you are leaving tonight's roundtable feeling encouraged. Dr. McCutcheonson, what do you want to say to the audience tonight as a parting shot? Um, I have one thing I thought about saying earlier, which I'll say now, uh, and Kara brought it up. I'll call you Kara. Um, is about the mental health issue is that it really is important that the medical community knows about lipedema because lipedema is hard enough for patients to deal with and for patients and, um, and people with lipedema, women and the few men, they should not have to spend their time convincing their medical providers that they have a condition and that irks me so much you know I had a patient recently with breast cancer that they didn't want to operate on her right away because her BMI was too high and I'm like she has lipedema we that so you shouldn't have to spend any energy on that so I just am you know so empowered by and, and, and sort of enthralled by what Linda Ann Kahn's doing in her medical awareness thing. And that, that's one of the things we have to do to help take one little pie wedge out of the mental health stress is you don't, shouldn't have to convince people of something that you have. Uh, and in the whole detach, I can't go to San Diego for a week I wish that I sometimes could detach, do that. And I recently found my own little tiny thing like Dr. Herbst did, is I learned about pink noise. So we all know about white noise. I don't know if you know about pink noise. And sleep is so incredi incredibly important, especially with the lip and ear patients. Our bodies completely like regenerate overnight and that's where stress. So I found out about pink noise and thunderstorms and and rain make me so calm. They're my pink noise. So I put YouTube videos on that go thunderstorms all night long and I sleep to a thunderstorm all night long. So that's just part of what I'm doing that's 
a piece of what everyone else is doing. We're all sort of doing the same thing. And that might be one thing that I bet I you love that. Great bet advice. You. By the way, you do look pretty in pink tonight, Dr. McCutcheon. Oh, that's my party shirt. Yeah, you yeah. Look, I look, oh, it's a party yeah. shirt. And we yeah. are out of time. We're out of time. The party is over. Hey, Brenda. You all are amazing. You made it a wonderful, wonderful night, as you always do. It is a happy, happy birthday. And you are loved, Lipedema community. Thank you for logging on tonight. We promise to get to all your questions next time. Have a great rest of the month, and we'll see you soon. Go to Linda Ann Kahn's webinar on the 22nd of August. And bye, bye, bye. Love, love, love. See y'all. Thank you.